But you got Samuel Jackson and uh, the guy from New- Newman from Seinfeld to come and clone from the, yeah. the amber <laughs> egg. <laughs> <laughs> Boys here, welcome back uh, to the number one fake history podcast on this corner of the internet. My That's name true. is we James. We haven't boasted about that in quite some time. Yeah, my name is James Miller, and uh, who, who else is here today? Hey, it's Ethan. Hi, <laughs> happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm pleased to be here. Thanks. Th- th- thanks for having me on the panel uh, today, James. Uh, my name is Peter O'Donohue. I'm, I'm running for office. Oh, well, unfortunately, none of us would fit into this universe because we do, we could not be a demigod here. We None of us start with a J, R, or M. Um, My middle name does. Uh, I'm pretty sure George starts with a G. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your middle name does. My middle name also does. Uh, it starts with an R. Uh-huh. Pete, do you have a middle name that, that fits in with a J, R, or M? Pete and I have the same middle. Oh, My you middle name is George. Oh, well, then there we go. Our, our middle names could uh, take your middle name, make it your first, and we could be a demigod in the lands between. Ethan, is your right. middle name Gordy or George? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I once got a free flight to BC when I was 11 years old because uh, I was named, my middle name is my uncle's last, uh, my uncle's name. And uh, it was my aunt, so my dad and my uncle's sister's wedding in British Columbia. Uh, and he couldn't go last minute, but he already had the ticket. But since I ha- my middle name was his name, I got to use his ticket because I just went and said, like, my parents were just like, oh, yeah, he goes by George. <laughs> that was pre-9-11. That's how the 9-11 guys got on there. They used the middle names. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Osama oh, George Bin Laden. Uncle's, is it just yeah, yeah. on the plane? <laughs> it's my uncle's middle name. You know, it's, it's my, my name. I go by that. I go by it. You, know, you have to understand. <laughs> he goes by yep. George. Oh, yeah, get yep. on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, what do you got in your bag going there? You got cigarettes. That's fine. Lighter. That's fine. Box cutter. Totally cool. You know what? Have a nice flight. Okay. Have, a nice, <laughs> have a nice flight, George Bin Laden. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you want to check my shoes? No. Why would we ever want to look inside your shoes? Ew. That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> it's 2001. Nobody in the history of aviation has ever hit a bomb inside their shoes. Why would we want to look there? <laughs> That's it, the Dorothy bomb where you like tap your toes together. Yeah, it's, that, it's, little, it's, it's got like the red wire in one heel and one and the blue wire in the, yeah. in the other heel. You're like, you uh, short uh, it's, it's, it's got a red wire, a green wire, a blue wire in one shoe, and then it's got a pair of clippers in the other shoe. And you have of to hit course. the right wire. <laughs> <laughs> Just to tapping and clacking your heels like one bead of sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it just like cuts to the FBI guys on the on the on the video. Like they've got the big screen up in front of them with the mic, and it's just like quickly, and it's just Dorothy's feet just like clicking together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are already way off track. Speaking of feet, uh, barely even started. Yeah, so um, we are doing Elden Ring um, today again. So so far, we've done the Shattering and a little bit about like Merica and her kids and Godfrey. Yep. Yep. We've done um, Mikella and Millennia. So Millennia being like the hardest fight in the game. Mikella being her kid brother, who both have uh, interesting stories. They're both Empyreans. Trapped in a wow. cocoon and invented a cure for the Scarlet Rot. His brother so, wants right. to bang him. Yeah, like yeah, Moog. Brother, Moog. Moog. Or cousin? Yeah. The Lord of Blood. Yeah. It's like a cousin brother because of the fact that uh, the family tree is so fucked up in some cases. Yeah. It's... Yeah, it's like step bra or half brother. Okay, but what are you it, doing since, step cocoon sort of shit? What are you doing, step half cocoon? Yeah, <laughs> half brother. I think it would be half brother because Merica gave birth to or three quarter brother, because Merica and Radagon are the father and and mother to Millennia and Mikella, but Godfrey and Merica gave birth to Moog. So three out of four of Moog's of the parents are shared by Moog and Mikel. Okay, right. Because one parent is two. Because, because one yeah, is two. America yeah. and Radagon are the same person. Yeah. Right. right. So, okay, yeah. let, let, let's rewind all the way back. I'll give us, like, a quick um, 
lead up, so you don't have to go re-listen to those old episodes because I know it's a few weeks apart. Um, but you can if you want to. I'd appreciate it. Yep, yeah, yeah, you can. So at first, world's chaos. All these creatures are at war. Outer god, known as the Greater Will, sends a golden star down to the lands between. Inside the star, it's the Elden Ring. Uh, it's an artifact that eventually starts the Age of Grace. Uh, Queen Merica rose to power along with her first husband, uh, Godfrey the Elden Lord. This is the dude who like summons a giant lion. Uh, Merica has her shadow like wolf blade thing, uh, and they're 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 the power couple of the lands between. Uh, they make a bunch of babies and they kill everyone in their way. So uh, it starts the, the age of grace where the Erd trees start growing and everything. Just like current uh, Instagram power couples, they just they they kill the weaker influencers. Yep, exactly. Uh, in comes Rani, um, who we'll be talking about a lot more today and a lot of her motivations behind this. Um, she's a daughter of Radragon, which is America's male form, and Renala, who we'll also talk about today, the Moonlight Queen. Uh, Rani steals a fragment of the Rune of Death from America's Shadow Wolf Malaketh, the, the Black Blade. Uh, they, her people kill Godwin with a fraction of the runes and fuse into their blade. Uh, the first son of the Golden Order. Uh, Rune of Death is fragmented. Golden Order could be killed. Uh, Merica shatters the Elden Ring. She, she she breaks the hammer on the wall that, that breaks the Elden Ring into a million pieces. Yeah, uh, yeah. Break, break glass in case of someone sealing the, the death room. Rune, of, Rune death. of Death or whatever. And, yeah. You know, start death, a war between is, the Golden right? Order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then Great Runes uh, get split up and uh, given to all the demigod children. Uh, and then they kind of start going at war. This is like where we see uh, Mikel or not Mikel, sorry, Millennia and Radon end up fighting, and she pulls like the, the the poison nuke right at the end of the fight, and like cripples him for the rest of his life, and makes him crazy with the Scarlet Rot. Right. Um, this is where we see uh, the jumped up country bumpkin going and hiding along with the women and children to go graft people to him uh, near the beginning of the game. Yeah, because our, our first episode we talked quite a bit about like stealing the. Uh, death rune or whatever it is yeah, yeah. the shattering yeah, exactly and we're going to talk even more about like why that happened today because Rani is like a big big part of why that happened okay, okay. and yeah. for the listeners at home wondering about the step half brothers this is a step half sister Rani to because it's the same relation just with a different I don't want to touch it yet parent? let's okay let's because Rani will be the second half of the episode Rani is supposedly born from Radragon and Renala, but is also the only Empyrean that's not born of one god. So I have a theory of why that's not her actual parents. Okay. Uh, okay. That, she gets really frustrated. Uh, she, she's like one of the most like hard to pin down of all of them. Okay. But Radon and Rikard are born of Radragon and Renala. But uh, right. we're going to start with Renala. Um, I recommend if you guys have a phone or whatever with you, pull up a, a little family tree uh so you can see kind of what we're talking about god godfrey and merica they gave birth to godwin godric godfroy morgot moog who we've talked about a little bit merica and radragon gave birth to melina who we're going to talk about at the very end of this episode uh melania and michaela melania and michaela are the ones uh that we talked about last time and now finally radragon and renala so the male form of merica and Ranallo, the Moon Queen, gave birth to three kids that we know of, and one of them I think is kind of uh, not the type of birth that we expected. But right, because uh, oh. America, America turned into her own husband and cheated on herself with the Queen of the Moon or some shit, or is not this a separate? Like exactly, we're going to talk about that today too. Yeah, <laughs> <That's so> um, <laughs> it's kind of wacky, but honestly, once you start to kind of get a grasp on it, it really adds a lot of depth to the game. I restarted the game. Uh, over the weekend and I started playing through a little bit and I was able to understand what the Dark Souls characters were saying. It would just be- <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Your third eye had been opened. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, and it, I felt like it was building on my knowledge and stuff. So this stuff really does help you understand the game and digest uh, what's going on. Okay, and, cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, first we're going to focus on Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. Uh, I posted a picture of her in the boys chat. She's the the top one with like the moon behind her. That's the second phase of her fight, but also what she kind of looks like in her prime. Okay. Yeah, and then very, the very pale. Yeah. Uh, alabaster, alabaster skin, one might say. 
Can't imagine yeah. uh, she gets a whole lot of uh, sunlight if she's queen of the moon. Yeah. Well, moonlight very goth, is... very goth GF. Yeah, very goth GF. I'll give you that. She's wearing moonlight like, is uh... just diet sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing like a imagine a like a sword scabbard, but it was for your head. It's like a head scabbard. On, on <laughs> she top looks of her like head. she's wearing a stocking or something on her. It's head. like a she, she's got like a banana warmer that she's wearing on top of her head, essentially what if, to keep her bananas warm. There is like a there's like a claymation kind of like California raisins character that is like a crescent moon who plays jazz. Like that's what she looks like. <laughs> yeah, I it's ringing a bell, um, but wh where it's actually from this uh raisin man i couldn't tell uh, oh i'll jamie so pull up the clip don't worry <laughs> yeah she's uh she's all about moon magic so before the age of grace this is before america starts showing up and having all her babies uh this is before the shattering even before that um before the elden ring came storming down uh it, a young glintstone sorcerer named renala studied uh lunar magic uh, she ended up charming the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Uh, this is an in-game area where you actually meet Renala. Can I, can I just ask Glintstone? Are we are we in the realm of magic rocks? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. Right, well. I know I know Glintstone. I'll drink. Yeah. We took uh, a uh, sip. Yeah. While you guys but, are taking your sips, I did find the uh, Jazzy Moon wearing Ray Bans that I was thinking of, and uh, he was a. A McDonald's mascot that recommended both dinner and breakfast Holy at McDonald's. Holy moly. Yeah. That is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the resemblance, though. <laughs> Make it Mac tonight, breakfast yeah. tomorrow. Okay, so yeah. eat a Big Mac tonight and uh, stick around. We'll yeah, so it's tomorrow. basically it's basically Renala, Queen of the Moon, um, if she recommended you just have diarrhea twice in a day. Yeah. So McDonald's for <laughs> dinner and for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Make I think it. this moon's trying to fuck us too, because he's like, "Stay over, and we'll I'll, I'll make you McDonald's breakfast oh, too." Oh, know? that's <laughs> true. He's to smash for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's make it moon tonight, make it explosive diarrhea tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know it's like, ooh, we'll be having breakfast. Like we're having drinks tonight. We'll have breakfast tomorrow. Is like a is like kind of like a sitcom like way of saying that these two characters are gonna fuck each other. Oh. Yeah. Breakfast in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So, well, enough fucking. Back to the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Ain't it's nobody an fucking at the Academy, let's be real. No, <laughs> they're all studying lunar magic. Nerds. Uh, maybe they're showing each other their butts <laughs> for the fool. No, mooning. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Raya Lucaria, if you play the game, you probably know it because most people, um, Renal will be like the second boss that they'll fight for a great room. Okay. Um, and she's the only one who holds a great rune who is a mere ass mortal. No, um, no godhood at all, other than a god uh, like gets with her for a while. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. While you were while you were busy partying, I was busy studying the art of the glint stone. Yeah. <laughs> like you can get a glint stone pebble is some is one of the first spells you'll get in the game, and it's just like a little blue like um, projectile that you'll shoot. A uh, little, little of, blue rock to throw at people. Yeah, moon rocks. But I'm gonna teach you your first magic spell now. Take your pebble, throw it at that that, that servant. <laughs> yeah, break break your, break the old man's window who lives next door, so he can yeah, run yeah. Out, just shake his cane at you. Yeah. <laughs> Do it without your hands. Yeah. <laughs> She's just teaching people to be Dennis the Menace, but with magic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna give you your first magic item. It's called a slingshot. Uh, and it's uh, best stored in your back pocket, in the back pocket of your coveralls. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that the degrees that people are getting from Raya Lucaria are, are completely worthless. This seems like a scam <laughs> university. <laughs> yeah, so she uh, threw enough, uh, broke enough windows to become run out as a champion. Uh, she had a whole legion of men who followed her called the Glintstone Knights, and they established the house of uh, Caria as royalty. Um, they, and they, she, dropped, they dropped Lou. Wait, what? <laughs> they dropped Lou because it was Lucaria was the Lucaria is uh, a cool, Pokemon, right? isn't it? <laughs> it was uh, Lucaria, yeah, Raya okay. Lucaria. You're right. You're right. Okay, I thought that was a joke, but I'm like, no, you're just you're <laughs> just, you're, you're yeah. clarifying for me. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to figure out are they related? Like, because I don't know how Raya Lucaria is spelled. Is it like three words? Is it one word? Is it's, it? It's Lucaria is one word, but it, it probably is like some old English thing for saying like 
uh, school of the Karia or something, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Academy of the Karia. And then the the house Karia is the royalty house, and she re- rules in the Academy as queen. George R. R. Martin needed another R in the lore, uh, and he, he was up all night not finishing his book series, trying to think <laughs> of a name for a university that had wizards in it. Yeah. Uh, in ancient Roman religion, the Lucaria was a festival of the Grove, held 19th and 21st of July. It's so coming up, it bookmarks the moon landing, which was July 20th. Oh, that's that's a stretch, but we're calling it we're calling it a link. That's a very George R. R. Martin esque link and and yeah. esque link where we're saying like yeah, it's a, right. Do you know what year the moon landing was? 1969. That's when that movie right. came out. Let's be real. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So uh, now we know we got um, Renala. She's at Raya Lucaria. She's become a queen of sorts. And she has a bunch of Glenstone Knights. So if you go up like to the middle of the map kind of thing, there's this whole land of the lakes area which not ontario land of the lakes it's like lakes of lucaria or something okay uh, and sh- around in the middle center of all these lakes is a beautiful uh, academy where oh she wait i heard about resides. this it's i actually know this area having not played the game but they were talking about it on chapo uh it's yeah. uh Lim- linuria of the lakes that's right that's and right. that is actually they mentioned this and it's that is based on this like fictional like pseudo conspiracy like lost continent called Lemuria where like certain like ancient alien conspiracy theorists think that like ancient humans once <laughs> lived it's like a different kind of Atlantis but it's called Lemuria interesting oh yeah, uh, yeah. Lemuria or Lemuria was a continent proposed in 1864 by zoologist Philip Glater to have sunk beneath the Indian Ocean later appropriated by occultists in supposed accounts of human origin. There we go. Okay. In the game, it's, like, a lot less mysterious. It's, like, really easy to get there. You just have to beat... Well, uh, it's sunk yet. Yeah, yeah, you're The, right. the lakes are there because it's sinking, but it ain't right. sunk yet. Okay. It ain't sunk yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, go- goddess Queen America, the Eternals, she establishes the Age of Grace. That's the whole thing we talked in the preamble. Uh, and she sends out a champion known as Radagon to lead her armies against the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. So, America, oh, by the way, America and Radagon, I almost need to do a whole episode on them now because I was looking into them and it seems like they were kind of shattered on their own um, volition. But America and Radagon, even though they become married, they have different motives. Like, America wants to get rid of the Elden Beast that is like within them. But Radagon and America like sets up this whole can't thing with the tarnish to try and like get rid of the Great Will or the Greater Will. But they're the but, same person. Why are they having this fight? They, that's what I mean. And again, so oh, okay, like America set this all up, and then Radagon like over consumes her near the end and kind of like seals her fate and our fate too. But they they do have different motivations, even though they are the same person at okay. one point. Um. She's yeah. one of those people who like TikToks and it's like, oh, watch me snap between split personalities or whatever. Uh, <laughs> oh, this, this is Lance. They hate Knuckles the Echidna. Oh, and it's like, <laughs> now, now I'm Vesper. I love Knuckles the Echidna. <laughs> oh, man. Or whatever. I, I don't know. Fake <laughs> disorder cringe on Reddit where it just shows all these people doing it. Yeah, yeah I, heard, I heard about some oh, controversy awful. where some chick was pretending to have Tourette's. Yeah, a lot of folks. A lot of folks are doing that on tick. Tick. Yeah, it was, Internet it was, was a, tr- it was a trend on TikTok for a while to fake having terrible disease. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm so glad. T- I'm so glad TikTok is a thing. I am. I am shooketh that this could have happened in my internet. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. On, on, like you know that Ethan, especially Ethan and I are big supporters of the internet being a good idea and a yeah, yeah. for humanity. Drop, drop, drops monocle into teacup. Yeah. <laughs> shatters it. Boink. Oh. Straighten my champagne. <laughs> so yeah, that that was just a side am, like a side thing. I need to do America and uh, Radagon justice because there's a whole lot there still too. But um, Just anyways, a whole we lot know of promises that aren't Green Lantern, Jamie. Jesus Christ! <laughs> America, the Eternal, established the Age of Grace. She sends out uh, her second half, known as Radagon, to lead her armies against the Academy of Raya Lucaria. 
uh, you might remember that Radagon's America's other half. So Radagon fights two whole wars against Renala and the Academy, both of which are just like any of its stalemates. So Radagon gives up on fighting and marries Renala. <laughs> Yeah. At, at the Church of Vows, uniting the houses of the Erd Tree and the Moon. It was easier to, to work together than work against each other. It's that. it's very much like a, a you know a romantic movie in like the seventies or eighties where it's like yeah. if you just if you just badger her enough, eventually she'll say yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just kill enough of her glintstone knights and maybe yeah, she'll take exactly. your hand in marriage. I, I like to imagine like the like the, the mouth like the like the thumb puppet mouth with like googly eyes on your fist is like He's, he's like America yeah. at this point, where he's just like, yeah. "Shut up, bitch! I'm 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 in love with her now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's also it is very like uh, like actual medieval like marriages that were like of expedience, never of of love, right? It yeah, was always just yeah. like, yeah, we need to secure a peace, uh, and the easiest way to do that is to marry off our children, or I guess in this case, cheat on yourself to marry your rival. Yeah. Yeah, like medieval so, borders were getting a little a uh, little too flexible for our taste, so we're going to marry these two 11-year-olds. It's yeah, not exactly. cheating on yourself yet, because right now, Merica and Godfrey are still together. Merica and Godfrey, the, the dude with the big lion. Yeah. So Melania and Michaela are not yet a thing. Uh, that I don't... Like, have Merica... That doesn't yep. need... That doesn't need to be true yet, does it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Do, no, it does... Yeah, it, it, they aren't yet a thing, yeah. Because okay. America and Radagon are not together yet. Are not together. Okay. Right now, we're uh, Godfrey and America are together, and Radagon and Renala okay, are together. Okay, okay. So now it makes a lot more sense. So this is a cheater who eventually will get caught cheating and say, Oh, no, Godfrey, that, that wasn't me, America. That was my alternate personality, Radagon, Just that married Renala. Just watch these Renala. TikToks where I have red hair instead. <laughs> Uh, America never has to answer to Godfrey. Um, yeah. <laughs> once, once Godfrey finished fighting the fire giants, she just told him to fuck off out of the lands between, and he never came back. That's yeah. how. That's how Godfrey. Godfrey <laughs> fought the entire war for her. Then she takes back the Elden Ring and says goodbye. <laughs> back, girl, yeah. girl boss moment. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Hashtag girl boss. Yeah. So yeah, together they have three children, Radagon and Renala. So this is now Radagon, who's part of the Golden Order, and uh, Renala, who's a worshiper of the full moon or the dark moon. Uh, and they have three children, Radon and Rikard, who we for sure know they had together, and Rani, uh, where this gets a bit more complicated. So okay. Yeah, after Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, dealt with the fire giants, outlived his usefulness, he's banished from the lands between by America. Then Radagon leaves Ranala, the Moon Queen's side, to become the second husband of Queen America. So he, like, she banished her own husband. America got rid of the husband. And then her I'm second half. And me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it marries herself basically so which allows radagon now to become the new elden lord okay okay yeah radagon so God, to me now is sounding more like a shell company that merica just set up basically yeah. no, now i'm two elden lords stupid yeah yeah <laughs> i've got this one elden lord in malta see he doesn't have to pay taxes so. yeah <laughs> And I, I only make eighty six thousand dollars a year, so don't worry about that. That's it. I make eighty six thousand dollars a year. He has two employees, of which I am one of them, and <laughs> makes one hundred twenty million dollars a year. Yeah, so exactly. don't yeah, look too closely into it. Yeah. yeah. So Merica and Radagon are now together, and Ronaldo the Moon Queen is left behind um, to her own devices, and she's really upset about this. To her, it wasn't just a a marriage for for usefulness it was really a marriage of love and they had three kids together and right, she was yeah. really into him yeah <clears throat> stockholm syndrome honestly <laughs> so and queen merica made radagon and Renala's children their demigod stepchildren so that she accepted them under her umbrella uh because her male half made them <laughs> so, okay yeah <laughs> and um when Radagon departs, he gifts Renala the great rune of the unborn. What does this look like? In like that second picture I saw, I sent. It's kind of hard to see, but 
Renala is floating in the air and holding uh, a rune covered in amber. It looks like an amber egg. Um, and this is... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's a part of the, the boss fight, even. And that's where you get the great rune at the end of it. Um, so all she... Her students, all her pupils are in the room and clearly just waking up from their nap, by the way. <laughs> clearly nap time in the library and they're all just like pulling their heads up <laughs> off the floor. It's I'll, I'll, explain, <laughs> I'll explain what those are in a second. Uh, not as cute as pupils. Um, but... <laughs> Little kindergartners shit in their pants, taking a nap. <laughs> 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 the academy rebelled against the royal family now because when as soon as Radagon left, they realized that Renala was not a strong leader because she's like completely heartbroken uh, and given up on everything. So she's not. They're like she's not a champion at all. She's a depressed single mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Take away her government benefits quickly. <laughs> 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 of welfare, the fucking leech. Yeah. Yeah. The so academy gets... like loses its charity status. They're just like, yeah, yeah he's <laughs> trying to start paying runes, bitch. Yeah. yeah. So she only has the great rune because Radagon gave one to her. She's not actually a demigod, so she wouldn't have got one normally. But she has one within this egg that she holds. Uh, she gets locked into the library by all of like barricaded in. She just stays there so she doesn't get like driven out of the of of the academy one wooden chair just like at an angle under the door handle and like, <laughs> yeah. i'll yeah. take care of that she, she's, she's not a demigod <laughs> uh and she devoted herself to the grim art of reincarnation so those things that you see on the ground there uh she's clutching the amber egg in hopes of resurrecting her daughter lunar princess rani who she th thought died in the night of the Black Knives, where uh, they stole the Great Rune. Okay. Uh, ended up killing Godwin and shattering uh, everything afterwards from America. There is some anime, or maybe a manga, that this is a reference to, because I know there is also a princess holding an egg in the Dark Souls 3 DLC, and the Souls games made by Miyazaki are, if nothing else, uh, just references to mangas that he's read and likes. Uh, okay. It's like Egg of the Prince. I, I guess if you're if you're gonna pull up the clip there, Ethan, it's like Egg of the Princess or some shit like that. Is like the is Filianor the, in the Ringed City. Filianor in the Ringed City yeah, is is one of the daughters of uh, Gwyn, and then it's that's from it's based on like uh, yeah like Egg of the Princess or or something I've never seen but like know of. Trivia. Someone let us someone let us know in the Discord. We got a lot of folks who uh, who, who read a lot of manga and stuff. Yeah. Probably yeah. would know, and I'm not seeing anything in the trivia section of the, the fandom page, so. Yeah. Anyway, so she holds this egg, and it's, it, she thinks that with this egg, she'll be able to give birth to her daughter, Ronnie, again, and what she does instead is make a bunch of failed copies of her daughter who can't use their legs and are scattered all around on the ground around her. Oh, they're paralyzed? That's why they're dragging themselves around like that? Well, I don't, it, it doesn't say that in the lore, but they never use their legs. So. <laughs> okay. I forgot yeah. to install them with the will to walk. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the rune of death and the rune of walking were both stolen on the night of Black Knight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ironically, legs. though, it was Rani who stole them. And here's uh, Renala trying to resurrect a walking daughter when her actual living daughter has the rune of walking. So, I mean, <laughs> that ain't irony. I don't know what is. Yeah. <laughs> Unbeknownst to Renala, her daughter survived the Night of the Black Knives and kept a watchful eye on her mother. So <laughs> just watching her, like, try and resurrect her and, like, doesn't step in and be like, Mom, Mom, it's a, like, I'm not dead. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for the pain I caused you. Please stop making these horrible, horrible facsimiles of me. <laughs> <laughs> she has her reasons, but it... She does keep an eye on her mom. She can't really show herself right now because Rani's body is dead, but okay. she, her spirit is alive. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Which we'll I'll explain soon enough. But it, it's cut after you beat Renala's stage one. You have to fight Renala in her prime, which her stage one is her just like floating around, and then you have to like kill these weird abominations as they start like glowing with the runes. Um, and then once you get past that, like she'll fall off the ground, you beat her up a bunch. And then the second phase where, uh, is the first picture I showed you is like her at her prime 
and it's not you're not actually fighting her you're fighting a magical apparition made by ronnie to protect her mother cool okay. so she just she just reimagined her mom in her prime and then like teleport you to like this moon world to go fight um her mom but once you yeah, beat the apparition and, and if you can beat the, the apparition fight. yeah if, I, if you could beat the apparition then i'll teleport you back from the moon so you can kill my mom okay <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually kill the mom uh you beat the apparition and you get the great rune and but you don't kill the moon queen she stays in the library and she is your respect mechanic for the rest of the game she oh, rebirths okay. you as whenever you want oh nice cool. yeah it's like, uh, hey, I know so, I tried to kill you, but I found this sword that I'm too stupid to use. Can you help? And she's like, <laughs> yeah, sure, man, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so she's like, she's like a kindly, like, she's like a cool, you know, like, uh, like a foster mom in some senses, where it's just like, you know, you, you're trying to get away from your parents, you go to a friend's place, and they got, like, the cool mom who's just like, yeah, it's cool, whatever, you know, you're, you're trying to kill me again. The basement. Ha, ha, ha. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you're trying to kill me, ha, ha, ha. Oh, then, then you you always go to them, you're like, well, what should I do with my life, you know what I mean? I was going to go into pre-med, but I don't think I can do it. She just tells you, like, hey, you want to go to trade school? Go to trade school, yeah, bud. Respect. Nothing wrong with that. Respect into trade school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of, that's the arc of Rani's mother, um, Renala. We get to know how she kind of rises to power, she gets stuck in war, um, marries so there is no more war, gets ditched by the deadbeat dad, who is actually goes back to marry himself as Merica and his, his woman half. Uh, then she's left behind without thinking her daughter was dead, but his, her daughter's still alive. And she basically goes crazy trying to resurrect her daughter. There's like this awful scene of her like crawling on all fours trying to get back to the egg and like one last attempt to try and get Rani to come back to life um before you spare her life and she becomes the respect mechanic but there's a lot this kind of leads into Rani's motivations um and actually we'll get more into that after the break welcome back from the break uh so we covered Renala in the first half of the show now we're gonna get on to Rani if you might remember from the first episode, she has a second name, Rena, for some reason, which we'll talk about a little bit. But Rani's her real name. Um, she, I, I do think have she's... a problem with some of the writing in Elden Ring, where basically everyone has a one-letter changed different name at some point, uh, which yeah. game looks fun. Maybe I'll play it one day. The lore is very cool. That is so fucking stupid. The Morgoth, Morgoth Margit, Rani, Rani, like... Yeah, okay. Rena. Rani, uh, Blade, I think, or, or Blade, we're going to talk about, I think has a copy of himself. The dog They're, guy? Yeah, one of the dog guys. Okay. Um, there's so many copies of, of, of folks in this game. but uh, Anyways, Lunar Princess Rani is the name of, um, of our girl here. She's the daughter of Radragon and Queen Renala, at least on the family tree. But Rani was confirmed to be born in Empyrean. You guys remember what that means? Uh yeah, she's uh, she's a demigod. She's born of one, of a single god, yeah. Oh, yeah, right, which yeah. which makes her a demigod, yeah. Yeah. Or even more than a demigod, an Empyrean can actually one day succeed the divine queen Merica, like a full on goddess. Yeah, they can um, like house the outer gods, which we talked about in the last one, because Melania right. is like houses the Scarlet Rot within herself or something. That's right, and if yeah. Rani. I, it's never mentioned that she does, but if she were to house any of them, it would be the full moon or um, the dark moon, because uh, she's definitely a moon princess. She's a, a lunar princess. Okay. You gotta give it to her. She's a loony one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, so she, one theory for this is that she was born from the amber egg, gifted by Radragon. Uh, even though she still had the amber egg, maybe it was. Uh, like i don't know elden ring shit maybe it was born but it doesn't <laughs> crack uh, maybe i thought it was, was a, a second egg, or something a second egg or a mosquito yeah clone In from she, she got samuel jackson and uh the guy from New newman from seinfeld to come and clone from the, yeah. the amber <laughs> egg <basically. laughs> hold um, on to your butts hold on to your mooning Funny that you say that. The <laughs> Queen Merica is uh, a Newman, which just means a, a type of pe person. N U M E N. Merica uh, Newman. Newman. <laughs> yeah. 
New man. Just Newman. Uh, also, the legion of assassins that killed America's first born, so- born son. Also a Newman. They came from the same background. Not explained why, but Newman. It sounds like that was stolen from Lord of the Rings uh, because Numenor is like where the Rangers are from or something like that. And Middle Earth and the lands between uh, yeah. are, mean the same thing. Okay, so I, I looked up Newman Elden Ring. Uh, top top uh, hit is a link to Reddit by user Akatsuki underscore raid. Do you think the Newman are a reference to Numenor and therefore therefore to Tolkien? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, d- d- yeah that, that's my alt. Uh, it turns out I've been on Reddit, guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Liberator says, yes, absolutely. They hail from the north, are long-lived and seldom born. Seems to me they are Dunedain. It wouldn't be the first Tolkien reference FromSoft has made. And Orlando is a name based in Tolkien's Elvish, meaning hidden sanctuary of the setting sun. Yeah. Yeah. So could be. Probably is. Uh, won't matter too much for our story today, but it, interesting enough, Newman's. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think that she was came from an egg because Radragon has done eggs so far. Uh, there's been an egg in the past of uh, her her mother and father. Somehow she's an Imperian, which means born of one god. If she's just a dad's egg, like uh, like a penguin here, then that explains why she's an Imperian. <laughs> She's yeah. just a dad's egg. Yeah, <laughs> I'm more like the like a penguin where I'm meeting like like Radagon like with the the like the chubby little like feather flap like over yeah. the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you know the dad penguins didn't lay that egg, right? Uh, I've never seen them not. I've never like seen <laughs> a, a a female penguin lay an egg. I've never seen them not lay the egg. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That too. I've never uh, seen a female penguin personally. They all look really? exactly yeah. the same. I like to imagine that uh, Radagon had um, Ranny like a seahorse, where Radagon, as the male, carried all the young, and then eventually just like like spat them all out like they were coming out of like a confetti cannon essentially <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. into a pool of water yeah, yeah. Right, right. The, ho- the seahorse is very much the 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 t-shirt cannon of the, yeah. of the animal world <laughs> exactly and the only one that survived was the one that could walk so <laughs> <laughs> yeah Randy can walk is as far as we can tell yeah um, but when the confetti cannon went off inside of radagon a bunch of them couldn't got, they, got they, ended, they, ended, they ended up in the library <laughs> well, that's, that's what happens when a seahorse gives birth on land, right? It's, it's yeah. gonna be ugly. Only the, the it's like the it's like the little sea turtles. It's like a gallop to the gallop to the sea with the seahorses. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the seahorses are born. About, they most of them break their legs as soon as they're born, ejected onto the ground. And you know what happens when a horse breaks its leg? <laughs> Dog food. They all, baby. To, they all went to the glue factory. <laughs> 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 so I posted one pic uh, and a spoiler. Please don't click the spoiler yet. But the one pic is of the two fingers. Dude, you sent me nuts, dude. Two separated nuts just hanging on the end of two fingers like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's very much the two fingers. Yeah. Uh, that's how it looks in game. So <laughs> take it up with the with those folks. But yeah, uh, those two fingers you can find at, like the round table. What are two fingers? They're basically like acolytes for um, the greater will. They yeah. also like try and pick you up. By the time you meet the two fingers, they're like, hey, this is how you become Elden Lord. And you could be part of the greater will, man. Um, but before they chose us, way before, they chose the Ronnie. Just, like hold a giant joint. Like you could be part of the greater will, dude. You just got to <laughs> smoke some of this, this jazz cigarette. Well, yeah. well the, the two fingers... I- I'm so suspicious of the two fingers, knowing nothing really about their lore, because every time we've kind of, like, talked about them, it's always been like, oh, it'll be for another episode. But there's not much about them, other than they just usher in, like, folks to the greater will. They kind of just are, like, the priests. But they're they're doing, close. but they're doing, they're doing, like, air quotes, so I can't help yeah. but, I'm like, <laughs> Elden Lord in air quotes, you know? <laughs> like, what, why, why, why are you doing that? Why not just tell me? Like, why put your fingers away? Like, <laughs> you might not be wrong. Like Gideon, uh, Gideon, what was his name? Gideon, Offnir. Yeah. He, like once you kill him, he's like, even if you kill the El- Elden Beast, like you'll never be the Elden Lord. Um, so like, there's kind of something that suggests that even though you become the Elden Lord, air quotes, uh, it doesn't last forever. Or there's some two-sided coin to that, or okay. whatever. Yeah. 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 I just 
I feel like I'm getting invited to the movies in grade eight by a date who's not going to show up and leave me, you know, to be laughed at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So the two fingers chose um, Ronnie as a potential successor, like way before they started accepting applications from tarnished ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or it's a hiring freeze in Parians only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they granted her a shadow. Um, so Empyreans get shadows like um, uh, this, this is an intern they're going to follow you for the first month just figure out how you do things around the office you know Yeah, they're yeah. just, just going to shadow you That's America got uh, Malekith who held the, the rune of death it was like right. that really cool black werewolf thing mm-hmm. uh, the shadow that she gets is Blaid it's like a dog person also like a kind of like wolfy with a big oh, sword oh that makes oh, okay that makes you sense you uh, yeah. So I'm going to give you a shadow, and by shadow, I mean furry, uh, to follow you around. <laughs> yeah, and it's theorized, not for sure, but that uh, these shadows that they give them in, like, a la- let's say you went against the Golden Order, your shadow would turn on you. So your shadow's there to support you for all of your your endeavors through with the Golden Order, but as soon as you try and go to apply to another company... Uh, this intern slashes your throat. Oh, it's like the gotcha. it's like the Secret Service. It's like, yeah, sure, yeah. you're the president, yeah. Mr. JFK, but like until you do something <laughs> that we don't like. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, that, that's a theory though, because Rani grew up playing with Blade and EG. EG is like this giant blacksmith dude that you meet in the game. He's not the blacksmith that helps you in, improve stuff. He's a blacksmith you meet out in the wild near the Carrion uh, Manor. Okay. Um, but anyways, like. At one point, whenever Ronnie's coming close to going against the Golden Order, E.G. the big blacksmith puts Blade in uh, behind bars to basically protect Ranny from being slain because he thinks that Blade's going to turn. Um, but in the end, Blade just stays loyal to Ranny the entire way and even manages to escape from this prison. You can let him out, or you can he can escape, na- or he'll just escape if you don't let him out. But um, he gets out either way, no matter how you finish the story. And Blade, okay. uh, Blade, good dog, good boy. He 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 never would have turned. He gets pats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Valley scratches. Yep. Uh, Rani, grown up, had a master simply known as the Snow Witch. Uh, so the picture that I sent to you guys of Rani, she's wearing like that blue hat and stuff. She mm-hmm. drives. She she wears the clothes of the Snow Witch at every point that we meet her in the game. But oh, the okay. Snow Witch is her, like, old, old, old mentor that taught her cold base spells uh, to fear the, and respect the Dark Moon. Um, yeah, yeah. But if, by the if time- you're too friendly in a work environment, they're never going to take you seriously, okay? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we never get to meet the, the, the Snow Witch, but at every point that we meet uh, Rani later on, she first introduced herself as Rena, which we theorize is the name of the Snow Witch, which is why... She goes as Rena at a certain point uh, to throw that you sounds, off. Or that sounds way more like she was caught with her pants down. It was like, uh, my name is Rena. Yeah. <laughs> like just. <laughs> well, that's like, like the Morgot Margot thing that I was complaining about earlier. It's yeah. like, why are the like, oh, the other name is like the yeah. same name, but like with a just, different accent. <laughs> like go with like geez jrr go with uh go with geppetto man like just go with yeah. go with something like so different you know yeah. yeah it makes it really tough to kind of like follow along too it, it's not great for the storytelling but uh i i think like uh, deep down if you're listening to this and you just love souls lore i think you, you kind of like it to be a little bit confusing so you can navigate it a bit better than the person next to you but i don't yeah. know that's my theory uh yeah, you yeah. just think you're better than us, don't you? I'll listen over there. And, and you know what? <laughs> you're probably right, okay? But for plenty of other reasons, okay? So uh, you chill on the Elden Ring lore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the lore is really cool. It's really just the it's the naming convention. Like It sucks, yeah. Uh, we've talked about I complained, probably not complained about it, but probably talked about it last week, where it's just like there is uh, like a... Um, a benefit to like there's there's a value to being uh, particularly obtuse or like obfuscating where yeah. it can make it like really rewarding when you do find figure something out right when the, you have that moment of revelation where you're like oh shit ranny that's rena like oh no you yeah. know but like you can kind of bury the lead and make it too difficult so it just becomes yeah. frustrating and then by the time you the reveal happens <laughs> you're just like oh okay that's what it is thank god like finally yeah. figured it out elden ring when revelations become revelations <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oops. It's, it's just kind of like a... Who's it? It's like Pepe Salvia, like sort of thing. It's like, yeah, a, exactly. like fake names. Well, I yeah. literally have to pull up uh, a list of all the names with the arrows to every name every yeah. time I do an episode on this just to be able to navigate yeah, it. Properly. Jimmy sends us the same uh, family tree every time we do. And I, I every time I open it up, and this time and last time at a certain point, I'm like, I got to close it because I have to be the, like the listener. Like, you know, I know you told yeah. them just pull up a uh, family tree of this. I hope if you're driving, listening to our podcast right now, you didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> pull, pulled over on the side of the interstate. Like, <laughs> just... <Yeah. it's, laughs> Uh, it's gonna been be late 45 for work. minutes. They've already rolled yeah. that truck, dude. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I close it because I'm like, I want to try yeah. and, and understand without, but it, it can be tricky. Just the names are so simple. Yeah. Well, right now we're still focusing on Radagon and uh, Ranala. Rainy. So, yeah, their kid, Ranny. Excuse me. Uh, while the Two Fingers had chosen Ranny, she was not really on board for becoming a puppet of the greater will and becoming um she didn't want her empyrean fate uh and why would she like look at what happened to her mother like they knocked up her mom left her with an egg um took all the the money and 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 all the worshipers and just left her to become crazy and like try and resurrect her what she thought is dead daughter over and over again. Like okay. yeah. not super cool for the moon not, side of the family. Not yeah. a great sales pitch yeah. from the sun side of things. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So in order to escape her fate, Rani came up with a plot to kill her own Empyrean flesh while sparing her soul. And in order to do so, she stole a fragment of the rune of death from Malika. So the whole shattering, oh, okay. the whole rune of death thing that started the shattering was really because they didn't treat Rani's mom so good. So Rani rebelled against the Golden Order and tried to get out of becoming an Empyrean and taking over the Golden Order. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes yeah. sense. She didn't yeah. think she could just like run it better when she was in charge. Uh, no, she didn't. She wanted nothing to do with it. She has her okay. own. Uh, like there is uh, an outer god of the the moon, the stars. They kind of combine them all. It's the full moon, the dark moon, the stars, the and it's it's really vague. But um, I think she cares a lot more for that outer god than the greater will because the greater will is the void. Really fuck with because her. I remember there was like one of the bosses when I when we did the Moonlight Greatsword episode. I briefly uh, touched on Ronnie, where you have to kill uh, Estelle, like born of the void or whatever, who's like this like centipede from space. I. Uh, if it is, it's not from the source that I read. They okay. didn't say the void, but yeah, no, I got the dark tired. moon, the dark moon, the stars, and the primeval. Yeah, don't read too much of that because part not. of that goes against what we talk about today. But yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, just because the they title. they say that Rainy's afraid of the dark moon, but she won't be by the end of this. She kind of okay. is at the beginning, but cool. Yeah, I'm scared of the dark moon. I don't even know what the dark moon is. I'm scared of the dark. Moon. <laughs> It's the regular moon, but scarier. I'm scared of the regular moon. Look angry eyes on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I can handle the artwork this week. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> you want to post a preview yeah. on Patreon? Do it. <laughs> so she imbues the power of the rune into the blades of her assassins, all our Newman women. Uh, who grew up where Queen Merica did herself. So there might be a whole reason to hate Queen Merica in her own land that we'll figure out eventually, but that doesn't <laughs> okay, exist yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, and they, she also gave a fragment to her brother, Rikard, which deserves his own episode, which we might or might not do eventually. That's a snake uh, fella you talked about last time. Yeah, he turns himself into a big angry magma snake um, and kind of loses control of, of himself there. Yeah, yeah. I, I did, when I still had the family tree pulled up, I did yeah. look him up again because I was like, who is this guy again? And then as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, yeah, he's the guy with the human face but the snake body that yeah. I want I want to learn more about. That's that's yeah. the guy I'm most interested in. Okay, <laughs> that's a, okay. He's a very cool design, yeah, from what I've seen. I want to do him. I also want to get into kind of like the dragons. I want to get into Merica and Rydogon, like on a more serious level so we know like there's so much this game is actually very very deep as, as confusing as it gets sometimes there's a lot there jamie found his magic yeah. the gathering he's just like Woo-hoo, look at this like, <laughs> like, walking on walking on all crutches baby let's go <laughs> <laughs> uh 
So yeah, the assassins uh, fell upon the royal capital, uh, which would become the known as the Night of the Black Knives. But okay, so this is this one uh, like mechanic that I never explained before. But when the first demigod would be killed with these like runes uh, imbued into the blades, uh, it would make a circle curse mark would be carved into their flesh, and that would kill the the god, right? But what they did to circumvent this so that they would still preserve Rani's body is right as they killed Godwin, they also killed Rani, but they only did a semicircle on each. So one person got their spirit killed forever and one got their body killed forever. Rani had her spirit who would, would live on. And it's a good thing they didn't mix those up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the consequences if, yeah. if they were easily confused. <laughs> <laughs> Which half so, of the circle? Where does the half of the circle even fucking start? Like, that's a, a ridiculous <laughs> onboarding process for these assassins. Uh, I wonder if I can pull it up. Uh, it, it's like circle curse mark, and you can also you can see it in a picture on um, on Godwin's back on one of the, the curse, curse mark of death. Curse mark of death, and it's kind of like it looks like a centipede almost in a semicircle. Yeah, it's a. Uh, looks like a spine bent to like form a semicircle. Yeah. Oh. So half of it was put onto Godwin, killed his soul. Half of it was put onto Rani, killed her body. And uh, she was able to escape okay. her fate as an Imperian. That does look cool. It does look like a centipede. Yeah. Well, I think it looks like a spine, okay? It says centipede on the wiki, so uh, I guess we all agree. Sure, you guys, you, you guys can agree with Wikipedia. That's not a valid source. Do you remember that in high school? Wikipedia is not a valid source. Please go to the yeah. library. No, one, no one did. Nope. nope. Yeah, so this changed the way that I interpreted the Knight of Black Knives. I thought it was just like let's fuck with the Golden Order, and it was let's fuck with the Golden Order, but let's also free myself from being a part of the Golden Order. Yeah, of um, course. Yeah. Um, and she had to have God, she didn't kill Godwin because of like spite or nothing. It was just because she needed someone to, uh, give up their soul so she could save her own. Um, so this marked, um, the step siblings as the first demigod casualties since America had brought in the age of the Erd tree or the golden age with the greater will. Um, Rani transfers her spirit into a doll, uh, that was carved into the former image of her, the Snow Witch. That's why you always see her in this way. You can uh, actually meet the doll later on. Okay. Uh, what is yeah. with Miyazaki and fucking dolls, man? That's another thing. Like again, like Elden yeah. Ring very much is just like he's playing the hits, dude. Like it's the good <laughs> combat. It's the moon. It's the dolls without shoes for some reason. Like it's it's always <laughs> it's like all the things in all his games. Doll is forearms for some reason too. Don't know cool. why. Yeah. A uh, new fetish discovered. <laughs> <laughs> so as we know, um, Queen America shatters the Elden Ring after the the Night of the Black Knives. Uh, Rani actually gets a rune. Even though she's given up her Imperium body, she's still considered a demigod. But she stays out of the conflict. So like all this, the, the worldwide battle with where Millennia and Riker have the final duel kind of thing. This all happens while she's um, staying out of everything. She's in a cabin. Just like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. More accurately, she's in an underground city. Um, I oh, think uh, it was Nocrum. not Nocrum, but it's one okay. right next to Nocrum and it's like knock or something. It's like, uh, of course. really, yeah, it's really close. Yeah. Um, I, I had written them both down and I took one out cause I'm like, I'm not even going to let <laughs> this happen, but I ended up saying it anyways. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Long after the Shattering, uh, when we play the game, Rani hears of a Tarnished Champion hurtling about on a spectral steed. So this is where you first meet Rani. Like, when you start the game, you do, like, your little tutorial, blah, blah, blah. Then you get to go learn how to craft. And you keep walking. Then you finally meet uh, Melena. Not Millennia. Melena. Christ, she man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm scrolling back up for the goddamn family tree. Melena yeah. is... Millennia. It's <laughs> Millennia's somehow direct child. I have a theory on that at the end. We don't know where really Millennia came from, but Millennia came from. But she's the uh, I'll take your souls and make you powerful girl. 
She's your maid list no longer. The, yeah. Okay. The, so the guide. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you go to your like fourth bonfire. You meet her there. Then if you backtrack two bonfires at night and you go to this, the second bonfire, you'll meet Renna, uh, who is actually Ranny. <laughs> but oh, she, introduces, she introduced herself as Renna. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a break from this game and I don't even know yeah. it. <laughs> so they give you, so Ma- Malina gave you a spectral steed. And Ranny comes and says, oh, you have the spectral steed, and it seems to like you. Here's a bell, which you can call Fourth Spirits, and that's how you get your uh, summons, where you can like get the three wolves to follow you, or you get the mimic okay. tier. And, or you get... Oh, okay. okay. Cool. Cool, cool. You get him from Renna. But Renna and Melina are the only two to really show up at bonfires and acknowledge you at the beginning of the game, which makes them seem like there's a link between them, but we're going to get that to that in a little bit. Okay. Um... Yeah, I did this in the game last night, and uh, she introduced herself as Brenna. She's confusing as hell, but she gives you some stuff, and I was like, thanks, and then I, now I have wolves. Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks for the wolves, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for all the fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Summon a bunch so, of dolphins for the boss fight, just like flopping around. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rani's quest is the number one ending that everybody gets based on statistics from uh, achievements. Okay. So there's uh, six different endings for the game. Rani's one is the one that happens most naturally. It's the one that in my first playthrough, I kind of fell into that uh, quest line almost by accident. You make your way to the Carrion Manor. You'll come face to face with Rani. Uh, this time she introduces herself as Rani, not Rena. And she asks you if you want to join her path. Um, and then she bids you to find a way into Nocron, the Eternal City, which Pete mentioned earlier. Yeah. No oh, Cron? I reading about First it no Maidens? One. First No Maidens, now No Cron, dude? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Some fucking squares. Yeah, the two no, fingers got the Cron. You're cronless, cronless, yeah. touch grass. <laughs> yeah. But don't touch Cron. <laughs> yeah, not that, not that grass, no. Uh, yeah, so you have to go there to find its treasure in uh, Nocron, the Eternal City, and it's a weapon that could be called Two Fingers. Uh, that, no, that could kill Two Fingers, sorry, and it's called, like, the Finger Blade or the Finger Slayer or something. It's like the, the, sword, the sword that can kill Two Fingers. Oh, the Finger Slayer <laughs> Blade. There oh, Jesus go. Christ. Yeah. Well, when you first pick it up... It's my okay. answer. <laughs> <laughs> when you first pick it up, it's 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 called Fongers, and then, then she tells you, it's like, well, no, it's actually Fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, don't you see? Fongers is finger. They've been the same person this whole time. <laughs> so after you beat Radon, um, so we kind of covered almost all of Radon's story. He was like the, he was a cool kid and stuff. Um, he grew up, he learned a bunch of gravity magic because he got Tiny too big horse. for his horse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then he led like a war through the Caled Wilds uh, and his bitch sister just turned him into a crazy crazy scarlet rock guy <laughs> and he killed he starts eating all of his men and other people's men but radon is still so powerful scar school scar scorch radon that there's certain stars in the sky that he holds up just by existing um and when you kill him in the game uh some of the stars fall and a meteor falls and it makes a big old um hole in the ground where you can actually get down to Nocron, uh the eternal city after beating radon oh well, that's pretty oh, cool very cool yeah. And you get to, once you go under there, there's a whole night sky, like, under the ground. Uh, and it's because the dark moon manifests there. And it's, like, eternal night down there. Uh, Ranny would be pretty comfortable down there. Um, and that's where the Figure Slayer Blade also is, so you go down and get it there. Uh, then Ranny asks you to, like, kill a shadow. You go and talk to her as a doll, and you have to kill a shadow that's after her which looks like Blade, but actually isn't Blade, because you find out on a, a mask later that the that the shadow is wearing, it's like, it really looks like Blade, but it isn't. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why like the blacksmith thought that it was a good idea to lock him up, because it looked like he was trying to kill her, but he wasn't trying to kill this her. Guy that's, not, that's, not Blade. that's not Blade, that's Wesley Snipes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so once you kill him, uh, eventually you get a key to a chest. You go back to where the respawn area and Randy's mother is, and there's a chest there containing a ring. And she, this allows you to be Randy's future consort. 
Okay. So if you give it to her... Finally, it, hot goth mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you give it to her, you, like, kneel down and you put it on her finger and stuff. And then she's like, okay, well, like, talk to me, though, like, after you beat the Elden uh, Beast. Like, okay. The last lost boss. And you, you go and beat... Actually, I gotta talk to the moon, and he's gotta decide if we're a good fit, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to ask permission. <laughs> Yeah, it, and so basically you do that, you play through the rest of the game, um, but this, after you've gotten the ring, you've kind of done all the prereqs, so as long as you beat the game, you'll get the Ranny ending. Ranny will ask you, do you want to put the ring on my finger kind of thing? And if you like it, you should put a ring on it, and you'll get this cutscene where there's a gigantic moon, huge, huge, huge moon, and it ushers in the Age of Stars, which... Um, means that the Golden Order has less influence, people are free to do what they want, and uh, Rani is going to explore the stars with you as her consort and probably bringing people around. Uh, so it's, it's it's the we go to space technology ending, I feel oh, like, yeah. in civilization. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, the, the Civ 6 science victory, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So to, to me, this is the good ending. I think Rani... Um, has pretty good motives compared to some of the other characters. Uh, it's the most uh, obvious ending, in my opinion, too, to get to. Um, but, yeah. Super cool. Uh, let's go to space. That's pretty much the end of Rani's story, too, but I have one last conjecture for you guys. Sure. Conject uh, away, my consort friend. <laughs> Melina. Or, yeah, Melina, so the person who gives you your souls, and Rani might be the same person. Okay, you just well, I said I said go ahead, but you're just muddying the water by making more different characters same character, huh? Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what if the same thing again? So <laughs> if you scroll up all the way right underneath uh, the picture of Ranny, Ranny, you can see has one eye closed with the blue on the left. Yeah, we yeah. have to if go up look, past this picture of sleep apnea that we have in our chat. And yeah, and if you go up and there's the first spoiler underneath, you can see Melina has her right eye closed with a red scar underneath. And they have okay, opposite I'm on board. eyes. I'm on opposite board. eyes closed at all times. So and and Rani could have been born from Radagon, who is also Merica, who solely gave birth to the Imperian Melina. Yes. So are we just saying like Merica gives birth to Melina, splits her in two, takes half that, puts it in rat puts it in the egg that Radagon gives to Renala, says, yeah. here's a kid for you, and wow, yeah. It could have been that um Or is Melina Merica... the body? America could have had an egg. Radagon could have had an egg separately, but even though they're the same person, they just gave out different results. Yeah, like, I mean, we know that America can split people, right? Or Empyreans, I guess, right? Like, can split their psyches into two because she did it with herself, yeah. Radagon. So why not with their child? Right? Could, be. could be that they split themselves as an Empyrean, too. And uh, yeah. if this other girl can level you up, she clearly can control, like, I don't know, like, control, like, because obviously the fire keepers are very powerful and those are the level up checks in dark souls yeah if she is parallel to that and she's like channeling the power of runes like it would kind of also stand to reason yeah, yeah. uh if you look at the next spoiler underneath so ranny at almost all time not all times but she has this weird reflection of a second face that kind of overlaps with her and someone superimposed uh melina on that second face that is next to ranny Okay, so you, and it's you can the see, same face. Yeah. yeah, you can see above what the face looks like. Sure. Yeah, you can see above what the face looks like without it being superimposed on, if it's hard to see Yeah, in the first picture. I mean, yeah, like, for the yeah. listeners at home, like, it's even, they, they, that eye is closed and scarred, and you can see, like, the blue scarring on Rani's face of Melina's, like, actual flesh scars. Like, yeah. this, this, was, this is either confirmed lore or uh, a, lady, a lazy VFX artist who got away with something here. Yeah, yeah but it lines up on so Melina, well. it looks like a bird claw, and it's not like that centipede. If it was the, if it was the cut that didn't kill her thing, it would make more sense. Cause, yeah. But it looks like a foot. Yep. Uh, third point. Uh, third point, Melina and Rana are the only two people in the game who recognize Torrent. You meet them both at the beginning in like random events, oh, like okay. just as you're starting. One of them gives you the horse. The other one's like, "Oh, the horse likes you. Here's some more stuff." Um, so nobody else mentions the horse in the entire game except for these two people. Uh, another point where they could be the same. Spoilers for the frenzy ending, which we might do at some point. Not really spoilers for the story, but Melina, the person who gives you all your souls, is a part of it. 
and she opens her closed eye, and she has a blue eye under that closed eye. Wow. Uh, I mean, I, you sold you sold me two paragraphs ago. I mean, I'm I'm on board here. Yeah, it's really <laughs> like everyone thinks it, it's just too close to not be related. So maybe we'll get more on. On Melina and uh, yeah, I mean, Rani in the next true, one. But... Because, like, knowing knowing Souls games and the way these things are written, it's like two characters that both use their left hand to write, like, are, you know, yeah. com- <laughs> completely linked and have their own secret ending, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they look very, very similar. They, you get to meet them in the same ways. Uh, there's just a lot to say that if they're not the same person, they're related in some way. And they're both Empyreans that aren't explained how they're Empyreans. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's uh, another Elder Scrolls, uh, or not Elder Scrolls, Wait, Elden Ring. We have, we have two more spoiler images. What do you mean that's it? Oh, do I, uh, do I have to look at them now. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that. Uh, which oh, one? Is... Okay, so the the one with her eye open is with the blue eye. Now I see the yeah. blue eye. You and the other one was when they killed. Um, the they two killed fingers. two fingers. No, yeah. two fingers. Yeah, it, from killed. from the angle that it is, it almost looks like a guy with like his pants so showed shut at the bottom, and he's just like <laughs> on lying down on his back in front of you, basically. <laughs> oh the yeah, it's, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> you also get to fight three fingers at one point, which I don't understand. Uh, uh, is it just yeah. the, is it just a hand with three fingers instead of two, making it a third more powerful? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's three fingers, 50% but more powerful. It's it, he looks like oh, all true, red. Yeah. And... Sorry. <laughs> He looks all red and glowy. Um, let's see if we can find a. Yeah, he's like magma. It might be part of the frenzied flame ending because I, I haven't. Frenzied flame in... is one of the other outer gods you had mentioned, right? Yeah, I, and if I'll post it here, it kind of looks frenzied flame, right? Like, oh yeah. Uh, he's all red oh, and glowy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it says the flame of frenzy next to it. Actually, don't even read that. that yeah. I might spoil it. Yeah. Made, made him made him so frenzied he grew another finger. Yep. Mm. Anyways, did, you, did, you, uh, did you delete the post out of the boys chat so we don't get spoiled for two weeks from now? Pete, as, I, as if I would remember. <laughs> Pete, I sometimes like think, should I not put the spoiler images now because I know you read them ahead of time? I that's true. I, I you did, did it to Pete Peaks. Pete Peaks. That's, that's, that's peaker, established man. canon. Hey, look, He's I'm, I'm going to go into Jamie's closet and look at my Christmas presents, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it got dark. You can't even see. I need a frenzied flame. Uh, so so right now. This typed into our chat right now where it's uh, Jamie pulling up the clips where I took a screenshot of you and you could just see your like eyes just like framed in the darkness. <laughs> basically, like, it's very to googling. catch a predator, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so well, that was Elden Ring. Let me know if you guys want more Elden Ring. Uh, I'm happy to look it up. There's still a lot to do. Let me know what you want to hear. You want to hear Riker? You want to hear more about America and Radagon? I want Riker. Uh, Snake Man. That's a Snake a Man's good. Frenzied Flame. We have to, we have to do that I'm, ending. I'm down for Frenzied Flame. I like the Outer yeah. Gods because that's always that's always cool. Um, and even I think like dragons and stuff. Uh, that, that, I don't know if it's tied into Frenzied Flame. Let us know. Let us know what you want. We'll, we'll Let do us it. know what the hell's going on. Thanks yeah. for listening, everybody. Uh, this has been your third or three and a half Elden Ring episode, if you count Moonlight Greatsword. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for all the feedback, everybody. Uh, like Jamie says, let us know if you like it and you want to hear more or if you want to hear something else. Uh, we're, we've been getting... For a long time, we've been getting more requests than we can keep up with, but particularly recently, we've been getting more requests than we can keep up with, so uh, it's great. Honestly, sorry if we don't get to yours anytime soon. Darnell, I mean, Green Lantern someday, for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you guys want to get in touch with us, the, the best way to, to send those is via email, so that's contact at loreboys.com, or uh, hop in the Discord, and there's a link in the Discord uh, in the description of this episode, so just click on that. It should take you to the Discord um where you can we have a channel dedicated for uh requests it's called yep. the lore requests channel uh pete how are things in the instagram world these days very good uh at lore boys podcast on instagram catching up works uh calming down a little bit so i can uh, i'm not quite as brutalized as i've been the past couple of weeks so i'm i'm only i'm only a couple of behind but if you want to reach out there i always direct people on instagram to discord anyway but i get messages all the time from fans which is wonderful thank you so much um artwork wise uh montreal comic-con july 9th 2022 baby we're gonna be there and we're gonna go out afterwards for a little mini boys con so we've got a couple of people from the server showing up uh if you can reach please do 
Um, I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, tickets are still on sale, as far as I know, and like if it sells out, whatever, we're gonna go out afterwards. If you just if you want to just come to Montreal and have a beer, frankly, if that's a thing you can do, go for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's links to our merch in the description below. Uh, if you want to recommend art to be put on a T-shirt or a flag or something, let us know. It takes me a couple of minutes. It's all good. And I feel like there was some other thing I had. Oh, um, right. Uh, if you want to send us an email, we want to do a mailbag episode soon, definitely before Comic-Con, so in the next couple of weeks. If you want to send us an email, we'll read it to you. We'll read your own words back to you on Twitch uh, is the plan. So, it's yeah. Pretty, yeah. yeah. You, you can send us a video. We once we once watched a video on Twitch of uh, Bison submitting his dating vid to us. Oh, uh, yeah. And Fiddy uh, shotgunning like a white claw or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, if you guys want to get in touch with us, uh, we'll we'll read whatever you will read or interact with whatever you want us to read or interact with. I'm not reading any more SCP memes. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had a lot of like out of context SCP memes uh, for a while, and uh, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe fewer of those this time around. I'll read them. I'll read them myself. I just won't read them on air. Oh, yeah. they're private. They're for the collection. Yeah. They're, they're, they're <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So uh, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, if you want to support the show, we do have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Lore Boys, where you can help support the show financially. Make it. Uh, a little more rewarding at the end of Pete's long, crazy days at the movie mines, digging <laughs> up movies from the from the hard earth. Um, head on over there. We have a couple different tiers. We offer some different things. You guys will be able to see my picture of an angry moon, probably, uh, on the Patreon. You'll see all the loser titles that we have for this episode, the, the titles that didn't quite make it as the title that you're seeing on the description of this episode. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll release the script with uh, all the uh, visual attachments. Uh, Bonus all that good audio. Stuff. Don't forget that. Bonus audio comes out on Thursdays, so stay tuned. Uh, and that's patreon.com slash the lore boys. And of course, if you decide that none of that stuff is for you, then uh, boy, do we have something for you. We have Lore Boys Prime, okay? Now, uh, long-time listeners of the show will know this. Uh, more, more current listeners, maybe not, but uh, there are three of us. Um, so uh, if you guys wanted to, I don't know, let's say ramp up our power, our lore power. Let's say there was a hypothetical three fingers in this, in this pie, essentially. Me, <laughs> I put a finger in. Jamie put a finger in. Pete put a finger into a pie, okay? <laughs> we need a fourth finger, and we are... Like Prince Charming with a glass slipper going around the uh, western Milwaukee downtown hub <laughs> looking for... Uh, someone to finger our pie. Someone to finger our pie. Uh, to be, to be perfectly there, frank, get a, get a finger in our pie. Uh, and, you know, if hey, if you're the right one, feel free to send us uh, submissions uh, of your fingers uh, <laughs> in, ver in various pies. <laughs> Uh, and uh and that's that's uh that's the price this this week for our, our lore boys premium so uh yeah crunch at us i guess lore folk All that right. would constitute a lore boys lore boys, lore boys. Uh, uh.